What's up guys, welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to do something a little different. It's kind of more of a personal opinion video of mine uh, because I'm just going to go over some basic settings within Revit that I like to change that help me out that make Revit look a little better, function a little better in my opinion. Again, it's not too much, but we're going to jump into it right now. But right before that, if at any point in this video you happen to you know, like the video, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That helps me out too. All right, let's get into it. So I, you know, it doesn't really matter what kind of project I'm in because of what I'm going to show you. It's in the options. It's real basic stuff and it, it it's all visual because I'm a very visual person. If you are an architect or work with any sort of visual software, you probably are too. So we're familiar with all the hover colors and all the selection colors and things like that. And we have this nice blue. We've got this white background. That's all great. That's all nice. But maybe we want to change that. Maybe we want to customize that. Maybe we want to have it jump out at us and maybe mean a little bit more, but yet not be so crazy that it's some ridiculous color that doesn't make any sense, doesn't apply to what we're doing. We're trying to be organized. We're trying to understand what's going on in our model and understand what we're selecting and what we're seeing and how we can process it from there. So of course we need to go to file and options because at this point I'm just going to work on the options and specifically in the graphics. I am, I really don't care about anything up here at the top. Of course you want to keep these checked in my opinion because it's default. And if you read through these, you'll know why you want to be able to navigate while you're trying to draw something, things like that. You'll want to do that. And of course, if you have any sort of nice graphics card, definitely do smooth lines with anti-aliasing. It's very nice. It improves the quality of the lines and views, as it says there. But we, what we want to focus on in this video particularly is the color section. The colors. You know, it, it does matter because it is what you see in how we work in Revit. So let's start to look at some of the options we have here. Of course, we've got the background in white. You can, of course, change this to absolutely any color that you want. And maybe you want to change it to a different background. You know, you could go full AutoCAD, go to black. And I am a giant fan of dark mode. Everything I have is dark mode because, you know, we just see the impact of looking at this white Revit screen all day. And then I come home to my own computer and I've got a dark mode on and it just relaxes my eyes and everything. And of course, you know, if you go and you look at the user interface, I have the active theme on dark versus light, but it's just so sad that the very minimal difference that you see between dark and light, I wish this dark theme was truly a dark theme and everything became dark except for maybe the background, but like every peripheral became dark. Anyways, different video. I sure hope that's a feature in Revit. But anyways, we could go to a black background, go full AutoCAD. When I hit OK, I get I get a black background. You know, this is it, it's hard for me to process what's going on. And I, I'll be honest because, you know, I grew up learning AutoCAD first, but then quickly jumped into Revit. And so <laughs> the background's always been white for me, or at least it's pretty light colored. And so this is kind of hard to process and understand. You know, it seems a little more flat to me. Now, I know that I, if I just take an extra few minutes and get used to this, it might be okay. But I just, I don't know, it's hard for me. So I, I don't do this. I'm... I'm, as much as I like dark mode, I'm not going to do this. So I, you'll never see me with a background that's black like that. Now, I do want to point something else out. Of course, you can change it to any color, like I said. I can't imagine why you'd want to make this some actual color because that would start to get in the way of you know colors that you actually care about in your model or on your documents or something. So what I'm tempted to do and what I have done in the past is actually you know, start at white, but come down just a little bit from white. And now I'm actually going to go from 255 on all the RGB values to 250. And you might say, well, of course, that's not going to make any difference. It's going to look white. Well, yes, it's going to be essentially white, but it will not be pure white. And I'll show you why you might want to do something like this. So, you know, there's not a lot of value we get from here as far as, you know, not being so light and not being so bright, but it's not exactly white. It's not pure white. And I'll show you why, because um, maybe at this point you you want to know where you've got pure white in your model. Well, this is going to tell you exactly where you've got pure white in your model. In this case, I don't have any. But if you're doing documents, especially, this is really important because maybe you have some hatch patterns that you want to, maybe you just want to locate them. 
maybe you want to make sure you have specific hatch patterns in a particular place. Maybe that is important to your view. Now, I'm not going to go crazy here. I'm just going to show you an example of what a pure white, a solid filled region might look like. So I'll duplicate this and I'll call this white. I'm going to change my hatch to a solid and then put my color to a pure white. There it is, 255. Hit OK, hit OK. There we go. And let's accept that. And you can see there is, you know, a distinct contrast between the pure white box region that I just made and then my background, which is just, you know, five numbers off of pure white, which doesn't seem like much, but it's enough to tell. And so, you know, I have found value in the past because it seems like I have more control over my hatch patterns, especially that I'm going to have a lot of white in my hatch patterns because a lot of hatch patterns do involve white, whether it's a line or not. But in this case, this one's just solid. But you can clearly see why you might want to go to a slightly off-white background to get a little more value and seemingly control over your filled regions or anything that is showing up pure white. So maybe you have a particular floor hatch or something like that showing up pure white. You can clearly see that and it's going to jump just enough for you to tell that there's a difference. So I, I've done this in the past. I, I find that, you know, I kind of go off and on of using this sort of value in the background and not. But what I do want to say is something that I do every time that I reinstall Revit. And I, in fact, did reinstall Revit here a couple of weeks ago, but I've not yet made it back to the color section. And this is really important because I really have found lots of value here. And this is just a personal preference. I've started this video by saying this video is purely preferential to me. And this is my preference, my opinion, but this is how I work. So if you notice here, my selection when I hover is always this kind of mid to dark blue. That's fine. We're used to that. And of course, if I select, I get the kind of the same blue, but like filled in. And I get the transparency, whatever. It's fine. That looks good. We're used to that but maybe I want to do things a bit different. I want things to pop a little more. I want to know what's going on. I want to know what my actions are doing to the model. So I'll go back to the graphics tab. And so my selection, you know, I'm again, I don't want to change everything because I don't need to. So I'm going to keep my selection at that blue. But something I do want to do is change my pre-selection. Now, of course, you can change this to anything. Like I say this every time, but it could be any color. But I want to, I want to stay within the theme that I am used to seeing, which is blue, but I want to go to this lighter blue. This is perhaps my favorite color blue of all the default Microsoft colors, just because it's not pure blue, it's a lighter blue, and it's not as harsh, it's not as dark. So let's hit OK there, and hit OK here, and then now I'm going to hover over, and you can see that it's it's just lighter, it's slightly lighter. And you might say, well, this is, you know, it's a joke, it doesn't make much of a difference. Well, the difference it makes for me is that if I select this object, it's darker. And if I hover over these other objects, even if I'm right next to it, I'm looking at this curtain wall, this is, you know, it's purely a different color blue. And to me, that says a lot. And, you know, maybe it might say a little more in 3D here, but if I have this wall selected and I'm going to select that one, I can, you know, it's not the same color blue. And there's, there's just enough contrast to tell me that, hey, there's a difference, you know, watch out that's it's kind of important now of course maybe we maybe we want to flip it around if you want something new of course maybe you go back to the graphics and we flip this around so our selection is this new blue and maybe our we've got a, a this darker blue here or we can go back to our standard blue here which is our our hover and so let's go ahead and hover this and we can see yeah it's more kind of a blue dark but then whenever i select it i've got that lighter blue well, it's really up to you it really is up to you. Now, I will say all of that is great, and I love those. I'm going to go ahead and put those back because I, I do want them switched. I like that blue there. And then, of course, the lighter blue with my pre-selection. My, my actual selection being the blue. There we go. And so really, it's the, the only thing I want to do now is look at the alert because I, you know, calculating and rebar editing, I don't really work with rebar because I'm not a structural engineer. So that doesn't really ever apply to me. But the alert actually applies to everyone who uses Revit. And let me show you what this alert looks like. Going to level one here, and you, you've you all seen errors. We're very familiar with errors, and we also like to create lots of errors and warnings that they're actually called. They're actually called warnings. But let's create a warning. 
And how do we do that? Very simply, we can simply create a wall within another wall. Well, the second you do that, Revit's going to bark at you, and for good reason. So as soon as I do that, there we go. We can see highlighted walls overlap, of course, of course. But the thing I want to point out now is, hey, you know, this is this orange color, and, and this is the color we want to pay attention to. This is the alert color. And so this is alerting me that this warning is purely looking at this problem here. And this problem being, you know, that I have a wall inside another wall, and, you know, I need to address this. Well, because I haven't clicked, because I haven't moved or anything, this wall and these the the instances of this warning are currently showing that alert color. And that's what I'm going to pay attention to. So I'm going to undo that because we don't really want that to happen. And I want to change this alert. And again, this is just my preference because it jumps out a little more. It's a bit different. It's not used to what we're always seeing, but it does really show me what's going on. But I want to change this to red. You know, I want this to jump out at me and say, hey, not just like, oh, you know, orange warning, whatever. I, I want this to be like in my face to tell me that, hey, this is a problem. So I'm going to put this wall back here, put it over the wall there. And of course, if I angle it, it won't work. But let's go ahead and put it straight over the wall. And there we go. It's red. Now, again, of course, this is not a huge deal. There's not a lot that's going on except changing colors. That's what this whole video is about. But it's the subtle power of changing colors and how it can impact things. So imagine you have a giant model and suddenly just boom, red pops up. Well, clearly that's a problem. Now, you might think the same thing with orange, and I generally do because I've used Revit enough, but the change of color to the red really just, it says, hey, this is a problem, alerting, alerting me to that problem, and you know, give, giving me something to look at that's not just orange so I can jump right to it and go right into it. So again, that that is going to do it for this video. We have looked at all the options of colors that we, we could use. Again, you can always change these colors to do absolutely anything. You can even change the selection to be semi-transparent or not. You know, we can see what this looks like here, the 3D view. You know, that that just means I can't see through this. I personally love the semi-transparent because I may not even be trying to select something that I want to actually select. But in reality, what I want to do is see behind it. So like right now, I can't see behind this wall. But if I go back to options and I choose the semi-transparent, hit OK. Well, now that wall is see-through. And that I think that's great. Now, that again, all these are personal preference. So we are going to end the video there. I sure hope you did learn something. Maybe you did, maybe you're not. Maybe you're like, what the heck? You're just a bunch of colors. Who cares? But this is my personal preference with colors, and I think it's really important. And, you know, maybe find some colors that you might like. So please demolish that like button if you did end up liking it, and also change the face of that subscribe button. There'll be lots more videos coming out soon. Stick around. And if you did stick around this long, you're awesome. Thank you very much for doing that. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching.